This conference will now be recorded. Okay, good. So, Bharat. Uh, Hi, Srivanas. I am Bharat here. Uh, currently, I am working in Infosys in the MDM uh, support project. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, total, how many years of experience you have? Uh, four years. Okay. Uh, good. Thank you. And uh, myself, I'm Srinivas. I uh, have total eight years of experience. I just worked with, uh, you know, uh, ABAP, uh, core ABAP, and then I just moved to SAP CRM. And then, uh, you know, I'm just working with SAP MDG for the past four years. So this is my uh, very quick uh, intro. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, what, what is there any demo happened or is there any, uh, you know, uh, walk through about the course happen so i just literally start as i begin okay so as the fr okay. first session okay so that uh, you know we can uh, un uh, <coughs> understand what what i am going to cover and what is your requirement are you looking for any specific domain or a complete mdg overview from a functional point or from a technical point so we can understand that uh, part in this session and we can ca cater the you know the upcoming sessions according to your need is that fine Yes, anyway, fine. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. So, can you see my screen? So, I'm just yes, sharing yes. a notepad. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. So, since uh, you both people are uh, with uh, MDM, uh, so you know what is the importance of master data. So, I just don't want to, you know, uh, iterate what is master data and all those stuffs. So, you already understand what is master data. And you have already, you know, understand some governance process uh, within uh, MDM. Uh, so uh, why uh, MDG comes in picture from where MDG comes in picture. And, uh, you know, MDM is kind of a, a software acquired by SAP, but it is not a indigenous uh, software developed by SAP. So it's more, okay. mostly of a Java platform, whereas in, you know, uh, SAP wants to, uh, you know, replace this MDM with an indigenous uh, ABAP based uh, tool within the same stack where the SAP ERP or ECC system sits in. So that's where they wanted to, you know, replace this uh, MDM by MDG. And, you know, uh, by 2025, I believe, if I'm not wrong, MDM support is going to be is going to be completely uh, obsolete or something like that. So that's where, you know, most of the companies now are focusing more on MDG uh, rather than uh, MDM. So they are, you know, slowly moving to MDG and most of the, you know, uh, MNCs are already, you know, in MDG. They have started implementing MDG. So it's almost, you know, uh, six years, six, seven years. And currently we are in uh, SAP MDG 9.2 version. And uh, this MDG is also installed as a core component in S4 HANA system. So that's how this SAP MDG is growing and, you know, uh, so the market of MDG now. So it's kind of a niche skill or a hot skill uh, where everyone is looking for MDG. So that's why I believe you people all also wanted to move to SAP MDG. So this is a quick, uh, you know, intro about MDG. Uh, <clears throat> so let's start with, uh, you know, so uh, what kind of, uh, you know, terminologies or what kind of, uh, you know, se sections are available in MDG and how we can link it and how we can uh, proceed with that MDG implementation, whether it is going to be a, a you know a core uh, deployment or it's going to be a hub deployment model and all those stuff. OK, so let's start with APT MDG. So I believe you, you already know about what is MDG means master data governance. OK. So we here we are going to govern master data. So what kind of master data we are going to cover uh, by SAP standard. So SAP supports finance data. Business partner, which includes supplier and customer. And then material so these are the and material has been renamed as product so earlier it was called as a, you know mdm uh, material and now they are calling it as an mdm product 
and then we have a custom data model we can create custom data model you know we, we will talk about these what are these custom master data also we can govern so these are the standard domains or standard master data which can be governed by sap mdg either it's going to be you know either it is a standalone sap mdg or within you know s4 mdg as well and apart from that uh, we have uh two uh extensions provided by utopia so so utopia is a kind of uh, you know uh, a third party uh a vendor i would say or a, a, you know a company which is morely uh work uh, you know closely working on this master data and uh, you know they have created two extensions on top of the standard uh uh, you know the standard master data which 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 is provided by sap so they are uh, that are you know enterprise asset management and fashion and retail management eam they call it as enterprise asset management fashion and retail management so these are the two exchanges provided by ATP. so on top of that using mdg these are the uh, master data which we can govern so, <coughs> so custom master data we can define whatever the uh, you know master data which we want to, to govern. for example uh, i believe you know about the sales organization or purchase organization so it's just uh, you know uh, in erp we have a t code where we can directly go and as a functional consultant we can go and create a sales organization which doesn't have any approval process suppose i in an organization i want a, a team or a proper governance process you know also governance you can in a layman terminology you can consider governance as an approval process which is uh, implemented which is uh, you know uh, which is provided for the creation of the master data so here uh, if i consider sales organization is uh, you know a critical master data in my organization i just don't want to create any you know junk data created as part of sales organization i want an approval process i want an uh, you know an audit information audit information in the sense who have requested that uh, you know uh, master data who have approved it and who have you know reviewed that master data and finally to which system it got replicated so which are the systems it got replicated so if i want to you know uh, understand all these informations for any you know master data which is not provided by sap then we, we can create a, a custom uh, data model uh, using uh, you know mdg framework okay so these are the master data which we can govern using sap mdg uh, any questions till now here no any much you can go ahead yeah okay so next uh, we will talk about the you know deployment model uh, i would say you know uh, now mdm is a standalone system okay and then this mdm is uh, or interfaced with uh, sap erp or another you know any other third party tools so similarly how we can uh, implement sap mdg so is it going to be a separate system or is it going to be uh, an existing e ecc system or erp system or s4 system Okay, if we talk about that, so SAP deployment, SAP MDG deployment. So we will talk in detail about uh, these things. I'm just giving a very high level deployment modes. So one is core deployment. Another one is hub model. Okay. So uh, this MDG code deployment. So you know uh, SAP MDG uh, developed based on ABAP stack. I believe you uh, you know what is ABAP. Uh, so do you have idea on this ABAP? Not extensively, yeah, but, but not that much. But just we heard and we just know some little of ABAP. Nothing more yeah. than that. Yeah, so that should be fine. You know, ABAP is a kind of a language which is used in all the SAP uh, tool 
to create or develop an application or as uh, you know program and all those things so abab is uh, is the language for sap okay so it's is a coding uh, language like c c++ we have for sap we have abab so uh, this sap mdg is uh, you know uh, built based on abab stack that means you know you have to write a code in abab for any enhancements if you want to do if you want to write any program then that should be in abab coding okay uh so <clears throat> here mdg is uh of two deployments we can deploy in two different systems so let's say you know you already may you know interface your uh, sap mdm tool with uh, acc definitely you would have interfaced or you would have you know transfer the data from sap mdm to ecc all right so that interface is there now since mdg can be is a part of or is a abab stack it's it's a layer in an ecc or an sap itself so it's not a separate can be installed as an add to the existing ecc or erp system sap system okay so if we activate that in the existing system itself so then uh, we call it as a co-deployment model okay and like yes, any solution reading. so i want i don't uh so uh in your existing for example mdm have you uh, interfaced this uh, mdm tool to ecc or uh, ecc system right you would have interfaced so the data flow from mdm to ecc yeah yeah right so now here that scenario we call it as a so mdm is a separate solution okay and we and the mdg uh, sorry ecc is a separate solution or a separate system so there are two different systems and we have to transfer the data from uh, mdm to uh, ecc right so that is a hub model suppose i don't want to install mdm as uh, sorry mdg as a separate solution or a separate system okay i have a ecc system on top of that i wanted to activate the mdg solutions okay uh, the solution means you know so there can be the sub, sub, certain applications which are specific to mdg there there are certain classes or programs or tables which are specific to mdg okay uh, so i want to activate that or enable that classes functions and all those things you know all the really other related stuff uh, specific to mdg in the existing ecc box okay so then we call okay. it as a code deployment model okay okay fine. okay so yeah. you you have a single login where you can log into the ecc and in the in the same system you will see all the functionalities related to mdg as well mm -hmm. so that you can start using the mdg in the same system so in that sap logon pad you will have a single uh, system where ecc and mdg both available in the same system got it so that we call it as a code deployment model okay and hub yes. model is hub model is something like uh, the mdm and the ecc so i don't want to disturb any existing functionality of M, uh, you know ecc and i just wanted a specific or a separate system to govern all the master data okay so govern means i want to create approval process and everything is in a separate system altogether and i don't want to disturb anything once the approval process is done then i wanted to you know transfer the data from uh, mdg solution to the ecc like we using certain kind of interface technologies so then we call it as an hub model okay so like the mdm solution so now in sap logon pad you will have two systems one is the ecc another one is a specific system for mdg okay here in the mdg you will activate only the mdg related functions okay so that we call it as a hub model any questions or any uh, queries here first any words you can go ahead yeah okay so we will uh, talk uh, in detail in the next session so you know uh, when we have when uh, we go with a code deployment when we go with a hub deploy hub model and what are the you know advantages and disadvantages of each okay so that we will uh, discuss in the upcoming sessions and then okay. if we talk about mdg so these are the main topics 
which we are going to cover. So these are the very high level and we are going to discuss and in each session we will you know drill down and we'll dig uh, in depth. Okay, so data modeling. UI modeling. Process modeling. Workflows. I would say it's a subtopic of process modeling. Replications. Replication framework. And, uh, data transfer framework. We also talk about searches. On top of that, we will talk about a very high level on consolidation theory applications. So these are the I you know very high level uh, subgroups of MDG. So we have data modeling, UI modeling, process modeling, a replication framework. Uh, I would say data replication for framework, DRF, and data transfer framework. And we'll talk about searches. And uh, so there are some other uh, you know heavy, uh, topics like consolidation, fewer application, which will uh, which we will touch base and we will I'll give you a very high level overview of what is this but we will you know in depth we will see all about all these things okay so let's take an example uh, i just wanted to uh, uh govern the master data uh, let's see uh, you know i just wanted to govern an employee detail uh in sap mdj i just don't want to create uh, any uh, employee without any approval process like that okay so the first thing is data modeling so what is this data modeling is so data modeling is nothing but so, so as i mentioned you know if you talk about uh, uh employee okay so what are the attributes we have uh, so like so if you talk about employee details employee master data So we have different attributes or different entities related to this uh, <coughs> employee detail. So entities, I would say, you know, a name, address detail, okay, uh, contact details. So these are the different entities of a master data. Okay, if we talk about a uh, 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 a customer, so we we have sales org we have general uh, data customer details we have uh, you know purchase org details and we have uh, you know partner function details we have bank details all these details are related to uh, you know are associated with that customer but we have different different entities or different different subgroups of information which we can uh, you know maintain so similarly i'm just giving an example like let's say i'm just going to govern uh, employee detail in the master data so what are the subgroups uh, for you know for just for understanding sake i've just uh, <coughs> divided these entities into three different uh, three different types of entities one is the name where we will have the or uh, our gender detail i will say general details which includes name uh, age sex date of birth and all those things and address details it's which which uh, which is about the you know <coughs> location uh, city state country and all those things contact details we can consider about as uh, uh, email and uh, phone number mobile number landline so all these are the contact details and here within each uh, general data within each entities So we have something called attributes. Okay, so attributes is nothing but like first name, last name, date of birth. Similarly, address we have city, state, country. Contact detail I can have mobile number email okay 
so if we come you know if we consider these uh, entities attributes so we have to define what are the data we are going to govern using mdg okay what are the what are the uh, uh, details which the end user going to inform and what are the detail which we are going to you know enhance and so in all those details has to be maintained in a in a format so which we call it as a data modeling so okay we will create the entities we will create we will add attributes to those entities and we will link these entities into uh, you know using some relationships okay entities and another thing is relationship okay relationship here uh, i would say for example um, so this general data first name last name and date of birth uh, address detail can have you know a single employee can have multiple addresses you know one has to end relationship so what are the relationship between these entities so we have certain relationships you know four different types of relationships mdg which we are going to you know discuss in detail but on a, on a high level so we will tie these entities different entities here we have three different entities gender details address details and contact details these are three different entities which we are going to link or tie using uh, you know certain kind of relationships okay for example if you consider these three as an attributes uh, these three as a different tables okay so we cannot uh, we should have certain kind of foreign key or a primary key which is common against these three tables right so which is a kind of relationship okay for example uh, if we consider as an employee id we will have these employee id in all these three tables then only we can understand okay which addresses belongs to which employee which contact details belongs to which employee so those are maintained using relationships okay so these are these things entities attributes relationships these all these three things constitute uh, you know constituted by the data modeling so if we so we we are going to define what are the fields we are going to what are the entities we are going to create what are the attributes or what are the fields which we are going to maintain in sap mdg so that is where uh, data modeling comes in picture so the first step uh, if we talk about mdg so first we have to define the data modeling uh, did you got some understanding about this data modeling in element te technology in element technology so data modeling is nothing but which tells us what uh, which which tell us what are the fields we are going to maintain using mdg okay so we will uh, you know discuss in detail about data modeling so the next one is ui modeling so ui modeling is nothing but okay uh, at the back end we have the structures okay but where the user will enter these details so we need to create certain uis related to these uh, you know data model so i wanted the fields to be displayed in this format i wanted to you know create certain for example i uh, you know it can be a fury application or it can be a you know normal uh webdin pro application or an fpm application so fpm or webdin pro is the uh technology or the um, technology used by sap to create or to uh to display uh, the ui in a internet explorer so this is a web based application so to create a web based application we use these technologies fpm and webdin pro and we are you know recently you know sap is focusing more on this fury application which is again uh, a web based application but the difference between this fpm and uh, fpm webdin pro application and fury application is a uh, fury application is more uh, you know user friendly application or, or a kind of uh, you know um, device friendly application so if you want to display a same application in you know browser or in your tablet or in your mobile phone so then you can use this fury application but if it is more of a you know webdin pro uh, you know a browser based application laptop based application you know uh, webdin pro or fpm application is the one which is suggested and fury application is mainly used for a a lean request okay you cannot for example so if you talk if you know if you start using the mdg and if you 
just yeah, you know a work on the customer master or material master there are hundreds of fields which new needs to be entered for a single material or a single customer okay in a mobile uh, you cannot enter all the detail and you know it will be very hectic if you use certain application in a mobile application you know in your mobile devices so whereas uh, fury application is mainly used for a lean request where you where the end user doesn't need to enter all the data so i just wanted to enter for example here i just want to enter first name last name date of birth mobile number and uh, you know at a city or something like that at the back end if i, I want to update m more application more information for that master data i'll start using the webdin pro application which is kind of desktop process or where you can enter more fields so these uh, things we are going to cover in the ui modeling so we we can i'll show you what are the things or how you can customize the standard application how we can create a completely new application of uh, a uh, new uh, front end application using fpm or a webdin pro uh, you know technology so that will be covered in ui modeling so using ui modeling we will we will uh, we can you know customize the front end uh, where the user can enter the data so for example uh, at the requester level i just do i uh, want to see only uh, you know na uh, general details and at the reviewer level i wanted to update the contact details so these kind of customizing uh, uh, layout customization of the front end ui layout can be done using ui modeling okay and the next one is process modeling so now we we have the fields uh, which 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 are going to govern by sap mdg and we have displayed that fields in the ui where the user can enter or user can see the data of that master data so now where is the governance process comes in you know till now we haven't talked about the governance process you know the governance is as i mentioned it's more of the workflow uh in workflow or an approval process added to the master data creation so here using this process modeling we will um talk more in detail about the workflow so if you talk about process modeling so we we call a change request so change request is the terminology which is used in mdg for any changes to the master data so changes uh, don't uh, you know take the literal meaning changes means only making modifying an existing master data here change request uh, so we call the change request even for creation because we are going to modify something to the master data set okay so we are going to add a master data to the master data set so that is also a change we are going to block um, i know a material or a supplier or a business partner even that is a change we are going to unblock a master data so that is also a change and we are going to modify some master data details like i just wanted to update them um, you know address details so that is also a change uh, any change to the master data set is uh, is you know performed using a change request process so it's like a leave request or a, a, you know an application form which is being submitted so once you submitted you will get some you know application number or a request number and based on that you can track the details where to whom uh, who who is working on that what is the status and if there is any comment so they will update that comment in that you know service request or the change request uh you know and then uh, someone will approve it and then uh, the data uh, and then your leave will kind of finally get approved and all those things right so change request is nothing but a similar kind of uh, terminology or uh, used for any changes to the master data so uh, again to reiterate so you just don't literally take it's only for modifying even if you create a new material so it will create a change request in mdg and the change request uh, so we will link workflows to this change request okay so workflow uh, we have two different types of workflow one is standard workflow another one is rule based workflow okay so here we are going to um, morely focused on this you know rule based workflow so which is a kind of 
uh, you know, a straightforward or easily understandable or customizable uh, workflow using the terminology BRF plus. Okay, so BRF plus business rule framework plus is another uh, technology in SAP to uh, to you know use for any uh, you know logical maintenance. For example, I wanted to in you know earlier what how the coding has been done is for example i just wanted to write a program uh, or write a logic suppose if the sales order is uh, greater than uh, 100 i wanted to uh, you know send an email to uh, someone for an approval and if the sales order amount is less than uh, 1000 I, I don't want an approval process okay this this i'll, I'll you know code it in uh, abap logic I, as a programming language so what happens is it will have some maintenance costs associated with later i wanted to make this a decision or may want to change this rule uh, i just don't want to you know uh, send any email notification or any approval process i uh, i just wanted to change the value for which the amount is earlier it was thousand now i just wanted to send it for ten thousand or hundred thousand uh, then i wanted to change the code Okay, which is maintained in a uh, programming language. Instead of that, SAP come up with uh, a, a separate tool to maintain all these kind of rules. So uh, that the tool is the BRF plus. Okay, where we can maintain all these rules and we can call these uh, rule in the program. Uh, you know, instead of hard coding in the program. So you know, if uh, if you want to any make any changes, then you can change the uh, you know logic in the tool instead of in the program so that the cost of uh, you know maintenance is will be reduced so that is where this brf plus comes in picture and this uh, you know in mdg this brf plus uh, in the brf plus we have something called rule based workflow which is extensively used to uh, route the workflow or route the request to an appropriate uh, a user or a, a approver or a reviewer okay so we will talk in detail about this rule based workflow at, at least uh, two hours we will discuss about this rule based workflow and i'll just uh, you know uh, extensively explain how to use this rule based workflow what are the things and it is very easy to understand and what are the baddies associated with and all those things we will discuss in this rule based workflow okay <coughs> so these are the two things uh <coughs> compress uh, you know uh, process modeling is uh, is all about so now uh, we have the master data which we are going to govern and we have the ui through which we can enter the master data or maintain the master data and now we have attached these workflow to that master data creation so once i'll submit a request so the request will now you know send to an appropriate approver uh, using the process modeling so we call it as a change request so uh, using the change request based on the change request the workflow will get triggered so as i mentioned here this workflow will be attached with the change request type so change request type is nothing but for example you have uh, something called leave like uh, leave request is a different change request type or if you wanted to uh, you know apply for transfer then it will route to the hr and your manager if you apply to apply a leave request then it will route to uh, your supervisor or lead and then it will uh, you know approved by your lead or a manager whereas if you apply for a transfer then it will route to your manager and the hr so different types of requests all this so all these requests are a different types of requests so similarly for each uh, type of change request we can attach a different types of workflow so for one uh, type of change request we can link uh, you know we can uh, route it to your sales team and then uh, your uh, you know five once they approve it then we can replicate it and for another type of uh, request uh, for example for material i just wanted to route it to your production team or uh, you know um, or your you know purchase arc team so then you can route that uh, workflow to your purchase arc so that they can review the content and they can approve it so they we can create multiple change request type and then uh, we can uh, attach a different types of workflow to each change request type okay so this is what uh, we call it as a process modeling in mdg so now we have routed the workflow and based on the workflow the user or approver can approve or reject the uh, change request so we can 
also define what kind of actions that particular user can do at that particular step okay um any questions here oh sending us hi nanish here yeah uh, can uh, like uh, what i can uh, like find over here is there any saying something we are doing with the uh, coding or something like that in this uh, like what we are we are explaining to the workflows or uh, rule, rule based workflow in that like if something okay. we are doing with the coding or something in abap for that uh so you know if we uh so to answer your questions you know the change request is a kind of configuration there is no coding involved and if we're talking about workflow if it is a straightforward and simple workflow we can do it without any coding okay, okay. okay. if okay. you wanted to build a kind of complex coding okay mm -hmm. uh, complex workflow so then uh, we need uh, we we have certain baddies or uh, baddies is no, nothing but a kind of a plugin where you can write your own piece of uh, logic uh, okay. to customize the workflow so then we can involve uh, uh, using the body for example okay so there is a role uh, a business a uh, user role like a approver okay mm -hmm. i have the role name so in a workflow i just simply want to uh, send uh, that change request to all the persons who are with that particular role okay then i can you know directly mention it in the rule based workflow and there is no code involved Okay. okay so you can okay. simply mention the role it will you know it will the workflow will route to the rule based uh, you know all the approvals suppose i wanted to eliminate few person based on certain logic okay, okay. i just yeah. want i wanted to route that uh, you, you know uh, change request to that you you know to that role only but i wanted to only route it to the uh, person who are uh, with uh, are within india or uh, based on country i'm just giving a you know a wild example okay yeah, yeah. so then that kind of condition we have to write a piece of code to understand where you know who are the uh, you know persons who have the roles and from that we have to exclude the persons who doesn't belongs to india country and then we have to route the workflow okay. so if that is the case we have to write a additional piece of code okay so in the, so for that we are using body yeah for that we have certain baddies oh okay okay fine. thank you yeah so we have around uh, you know five different types of baddies in rule based workflow one is to control the agent you know that we will discuss in detail so one is to control the uh, agent or the person to whom we have to you know send it and another one is to determine what should be the next step uh, you know uh, suppose you want to skip one level of approval based on certain condition so then you you have certain body to skip that and uh, if you want to send some uh, you know call some programs or uh, certain um, you know uh, function modules during this workflow so then we have certain bodies to call that so there are certain bodies associated with this rule based workflow we will you know discuss all in detail uh, you know during the process modeling or the workflow okay so if it is a very to answer your question if it is very simple you can write it without any uh, code code if there are certain complex scenarios then uh, you can you you have to use a body to customize the workflow yes okay. thank you yeah okay so now uh, you know uh, the workflow has been uh, approved the change request or the master data which you got created is you know approved by the approver what should be the next step so the next step is you know uh, the data has to be available in the ecc system so that you can start using the master data okay so even uh, being it a code deployment model or hub model until the workflow is approved until all the approval process are done the data will not be available in the ecc for for the usage okay so now we have to replicate the data from mdg to ECC okay so if it is a hub model uh, we have to replicate it from the you know MDG system to the ECC using a uh, different technology you know technology we can use uh, hello. So we in short we will call it as DRF so we can use IDOCS 
so for most of the for things and then we can use sova we can use rfcs and we can use file so these are the four uh, technologies which we can use for replicate the master data from one system to the ecc system from mdg system to ecc system uh, i'll we will just in detail we will discuss what are these technologies and uh, you know we have which uh, you know master all these te 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 technologies are supported or not supported by all the master data which we have seen above okay so we have uh, i'll just explain what are the technologies supported by uh, each terminologies and uh, uh, when we can use when, when we can use with the, you know when we can go with the specific uh, technologies for replicate the data so these technologies are used to replicate the master data from uh, sap mdg to sap ecc system okay so these are the you know so now if you see on a whole first we have created a uh, or we have defined the structure of the data master data using data modeling and then we have created a ui using ui modeling uh, through which the end user or an approver can uh, you know see the data and approve the data and then we have attached a workflow using change process modeling to the uh, you know to the <coughs> master data creation and finally we we have certain te technologies to replicate the data from mdg to acc system so these uh, all these technologies we are you know technologies we are going to talk in detail uh, in each session okay and uh, on top of that we have something called search data transfer So we have uh, DT import. File upload. Download. So data transfer is nothing but, uh, you know, by mass, you wanted to transfer a data into MDG or you want to export the data from MDG and you wanted to use that data in a third party system where there is an interface is not possible or you want to transfer the data using file, then you can use this data transfer framework. So this is for both importing the data into MDG and uh, exporting the data from mdg to a file so we can use these frameworks dt import data transfer import framework and dt export data transfer export framework and similarly we have file upload and download framework uh, so these are used to uh, you know transfer the data in bulk either importing into mdg or getting the data from mdg to as any into a file we can use these technologies um so this we will you know uh, discuss in detail when we talk about you know this uh, deployment model and then we have searches searches validation and derivation So here we talk about HANA search and in validation we talk about BRF plus. Okay, so searches we are going to you know SAP now more uh, you know mainly focusing on this HANA search. So we are going to discuss about the HANA search, how to enable HANA search, how to you know uh, change or add uh, customize that HANA search, how to uh, you know add your custom fields which has been added as part of the data modeling to HANA search. All these things we are going to define or we are going to discuss in the HANA search. And the next thing is the next important thing is our validations and derivations. So uh, while entering a while creating a master data, so you know you wanted a data to be proper and clean, and you wanted uh, the data to be incomplete. Okay, 
for example uh let's say i you know the let's say the my employee master data you wanted to validate the uh you know date of birth so obviously the date of birth cannot be in future right so the employee date has to be in past so there you wanted to write certain validation okay so otherwise if you allow any data to be entered in that particular field then the master data or mdg governance process is now no of no use uh, the main purpose of this master data is you wanted to clean and proper and approve data into your system so for that we have something called validation framework so which is again used uh, you know uh, we have uh, brf plus and we also have baddies to validate the data you can write your logic using brf plus and then um, uh, you know based on that the data will be valid and an error message will be thrown or a warning message will be thrown according to your configuration which you have done in the ui okay so if i suppose i just wanted to uh, you know mention an employee the employee obviously the employee cannot uh, you know uh, cannot born in a future you know i cannot uh, create an employee with the data birth in the you know mentioning next year so i can write a simple logic uh, you know the date of birth the employee should be uh, you know uh, date of birth should be less than today's date again you can have a you know more uh, dynamic uh, val uh, validation as well so let's say you know the employee should be of minimum of 18 years of age because otherwise there are certain labor laws which uh, will uh, you know <clears throat> which will show you so uh, you you can write in certain kind of validations uh, through maintain and proper data and uh, derivation is nothing but you know based on certain fields i wanted to derive another field for example date of birth you have entered and based on the date of birth you can easily derive the you know age based on the date of year so if you want to do certain kind of derivation so then you can derive that derivation for example again i you know based on a pin code if you want to derive the address details or uh, you know like in Amazon and Flipkart, you have seen once you enter the you know pin code, you will easily you know the system will show you the city with to which you belongs to. It's it's a kind of derivation. You can you know in incorporate certain kind of derivation in MDG so that user doesn't need to fill all the data. So, so you know based on certain fields, you can automatically derive certain fields value. So that we can cover it using validations and derivations. Both these validations and derivations uh, are possible using brs plus framework on top of that there are certain bodies through which you can uh, validate and derive the master data and finally consolidation and fury app So consolidation is nothing but the consolidation is a process or uh, uh, a technology which has been introduced from MDG8 and uh, which has been extensively built or morely you know highly evolved in MDG uh, MDG9 and uh, H4 MDG. So consolidation, as mentioned, for example, uh, consolidating the master data. You have multiple systems uh, uh, systems in your landscape, like you know you have multiple ERP system or ECC system. For example, for supplier, you you would have you have uh, SAP ECC system. On top of that, you also have you know Ariba uh, system to manage your suppliers. So then uh, you can so you, the master data has been split in multiple systems. So the, there are possibilities of duplicates in the system. So when you move into MDG, for example, in each system for a single business partner, you have three different business partner with the same details in three different system. So while moving to MDG, you just don't want to bring all the three into one, uh, you know, into the MDG. So you can use this consolidation process to consolidate the master data to bring the best records into MDG system. For example, I don't want to bring all the three. I just wanted to bring only one and uh, the one should be of, you know, with the complete data. For example, in for one business partner in one system, I have address detail for another in, for the same business partner in another system. I have uh you know contact details so while bringing into mdg i just don't want to bring two different business partner for the same customer same person instead i just wanted to bring one business partner with all the data combined and included into the uh into one uh master data so that that's where the consultation comes in uh, a big picture so in the session i know even though it's not uh, you know extensively covered but we will give you a very high level on the consolidation 
and similarly fiori application is some, something you know in our recent days from mdg8 and morely from mdg9 sap is providing this fiori application a standard uh, fiori application which is nothing but an sap ui fi based an html based application uh, uh, for the master data creation and the approval process so again as i mentioned earlier so this is morely of a lean request kind of thing you know you cannot achieve or you cannot modify all the fields using fiori application but whereas you it's kind of a request or a end user who doesn't have the complete knowledge uh, for example a salesperson a salesperson you know might went to a uh, uh, an expo he will meet interact with the multiple persons where he doesn't have uh, you know all the detail he just have only the name contact number and the website and he just simply create that uh, you know a business partner or a customer and then we the back end we have a separate we, we, you know organization will have a separate team where they will you know call that particular person and get all the related details you know what are, what is the, what is this mode of industry or where it is being used uh, you know what are the different organizations they are linked with what kind of business they are doing you know all these details can be uh, collected using a back office uh, personnel and then it can be approved so that's where the fiori application plays void picture you know for a kind of lean request and using webdin or fpm application the the data can be increased and then finally it get approved and the, the, the data can be used using ecc systems okay so these are the topics or <clears throat> on a high level we are going to cover uh, these are the things which are uh, you know which are in mdg so when you go in go to an, any interview and all those things so these are the topics they will cover or they will question um, on a high level so any questions here no sir uh, so by this i think uh, we can uh, close this in but i'm just looking for some feedback how the session was and what things needs to be improved and uh, what kind of expect expectations you have so that we can cater the you know sessions accordingly uh, hi srinivas uh, yeah but uh, can you please show us the ecc and emdg screen uh, application uh, uh, definitely i can uh, do what but not right now i'm not connected with an sap system because uh, you know once the session happens everything i'll just go into each screen and i'll show what are the things associated with it Okay. So we will uh, go. Uh, you know, it's it's you know the, the session is going to be uh, not only a theoretical session. You know, in the same session we will. It's a kind of demo work work and uh, explain model. So I'll just create a data model and I'll just explain how to create it. Okay, by step by step we'll do it and we'll explain what is the importance, what what are the things associated with it. So that's how I'm just going to uh, take the session. So it's definitely you know. Uh, system driven uh, session. Okay. So, Sinivas, Fiori is again a separate platform or it's into the MDG only, like the same system? Fiori is, is uh, definitely a separate platform. It's not related to MDG. It, it's, it's a kind okay. of front end uh, application. Uh, for all the ECC uh, SAP related tools. So now, uh, SAP is focusing more on this Fiori. And the fear is also a hot skill in the market. But here okay. we are going to just, uh, you know, see the uh, basic Fiori applications uh, which are supported by MTG. Okay. 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 We are not yeah. going to discuss how to develop a Fiori application, but I'll just show you what are the Fiori application, what is the purpose, what are the things associated with it. Okay. Thank you. So, anything else? Nothing from my side because once we start with the session, actually practicing and all that time, we can see what. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So as yeah. I mentioned, you know, from day one, we are going to uh, go into the system and uh, see all the stuffs. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so I think. Uh, if you are happy, then uh, we can discuss about the timing. Uh, yes, yes. And other stuff, so Nikita. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So, Srinivas, is it possible for you to take it on every day, like for one hour? Yes, yes, yes. So, I think uh, we all are working. So, 
like after in the evening after a uh, nine o'clock or something if if you if it's possible to you then we can start like yeah so uh, i we can take it in the morning and the evening so it's according to uh, your time uh, convenient yes. so, uh, let us know so for both bharat and uh, yanesh let's uh, see yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the timing uh, i know it's it's getting suited for all uh, all three of us and accordingly yes. we will plan and we can uh, you know take decisions yes yes sure so because in the morning i don't think so i can manage because and at the 7 o'clock i have to go from home so for now please so in okay. the evening it's possible for me so now it's up to bharat and you if you both are okay with the evening time then we can start in the evening so i'm evening fine with nine o'clock yeah evening with 9 9:30 to 11 uh, should be fine for me yes that is so fine for me yeah nikita i i i am that is also fine for me also and bharat hi hi just send me your details yeah sure Uh, so nine o'clock will be the timing for the classes. Um, so we can continue from Monday. Yes, yes, sure, nice. Yes, yes. Nanesh and Bharat, will that be okay if we continue from yes, Monday? Yes, 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 Nikita. And I just uh, wanted like some notes or something like uh, how that will happen. Uh, happen like that will be provided by yeah. class. Study material. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. No, so uh, you know, for each session, I'll just provide you a separate documents or PDFs related to that, mm-hmm. and also you have the recordings of the sessions, and I also share the notepad yeah. or the stuff which we are going to talking through. Yeah, yeah, sure. And Nikita, what about the practice, like uh, the server access and all? yeah Hello? the server will be provided uh, um from monday that is we have a session on monday so we can provide it from <laughs> monday too. if you want it from yeah. tomorrow we can send it no that's okay i'm just asking that when that will be open which is okay from monday we can start so fine for me also mm-hmm. okay fine yeah. okay so shall we close the session now yes 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 we can okay thank okay, you yeah Thank you, Srinivas. Have a nice Thank day. Bye bye. Yeah, have a nice day. Bye. Yeah. Bye, Nikita. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.